Actually, the great thing about these ceramic burrs, and the, the patient, when I mentioned this, I was using these ceramic burrs, is that um, they have a great cutting efficiency, but they don't kind of vibrate the patient's head um, into next week. So um, what I am going to do in this case, I'm going to use a stamp technique. And what the stamp technique is essentially is we're going to flow some uh, flowable composite into the occlusal surface of this tooth just to capture the occlusal uh, anatomy. I think it's, it's pretty good. But in another way, what I've noticed is it does get all over the place. And I wonder um, when we wash it away here, we can see that the caries detection dye is uh, stained at the occlusal surface. And um, the last thing to do essentially is just to check the occlusion. So hello, welcome to uh, this week's clinical case. A little bit different today. It's not your usual root canal case. And you might think to yourself, well, this is a root canal channel. Um, why are we um, uh, sort of doing uh, a sort of restorative video? Well, the channel, um, its its original guise was I love the pulp and it's being kind to the pulp. And um, believe it or not, it's kind of, um, trying to stop or prevent uh, root canals, and um, today's case really is uh, is is a showcase of a particular instrument that I have been using because I do do general dentistry. It's not just root canal, and I've been using these ceramic burrs, which I feel like are much kinder to the pulp, and they're absolutely fantastic. So I've been using these for a while now, and um, you know I managed to get on video a case of me doing a filling on a tooth um, which using these ceramic burrs and the great thing about these ceramic burrs is that they um, don't create a lot of heat so when you're using these sort of slow hand pieces these, these rose head burrs they can cause and create a significant amount of heat which can kill the pulp off so if you've ever done a, a, a filling on a, on a on a tooth and you've just really really sort of grinded away at the decay trying to remove uh, some of the decay with your rose head especially if you're using cheap rose heads um, this can create heat for the pulp and then the patient comes back in pain and then you are doing a root canal um, what I would say a caveat to this is I'm not a restorative dentist and actually I'd be really really interested for the people who watch these videos um, to give you your tips because I'm always learning with this channel it's great uh, you do use caries detection dye I want um, I do have a problem with that actually so if you if you're a restorative dentist and you're very very knowledgeable please give us your pearls of wisdom in the comments section below and let's sort of learn from this video but before we get into the video what I want to say is that when we look at the metrics of the channel 50% of the viewers that watch the videos are non-subscribers so what I would say is um, if you could do one thing for me, it's quick, it's easy, and it's free, it's just to hit that subscribe button. If you hit the subscribe button, I promise each week I will strive to give you better and better content. And if you want to bring the support even further, we've got a membership program. The membership program gives you early access to content. So we've got uh, usually work three weeks ahead. So if you like these types of videos, you can watch them in advance. And we've also got exclusive content. We've got a endodontic access video, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's about an hour long and it gives you all tips and tricks on how to access endodontic uh, uh, teeth for endodontic treatment. So let's move over to the case here. So straight away we've rubber down the tooth. The tooth doesn't have decay in the distal or uh, mesial aspects. So I've done some uh, uh, single tooth isolation here. For me it's just easier and uh, when we look at the tooth it looks a little bit unclean. So and um, what I'm going to use is just an ultrasonic tip just to remove some of the uh, plaque and calculus, give this tooth a little bit of a clean up. And now I can kind of see where the decay is and we need to sort of drill into this tooth. And um, what I am going to do in this case, I'm going to use a stamp technique. And what the stamp technique is essentially is we're going to flow some uh, flowable composite into the occlusal surface of this tooth just to capture the occlusal uh, anatomy. And then a later date, we're going to use this to copy the occlusion of the tooth. And I know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real bone of contention between dentists between this technique, but I prefer this technique. I think it's a good technique. And you can see here, we've made a copy of the occlusal surface here. So it's all nice and we've got a nice little bit of a occlusal anatomy and that is placed away to use right at the end 
So we're going to remove uh, the uh, unsupported enamel. In this case, I'm going to use a fissure burr. Sometimes I like to use a pear-shaped burr. In this case, I'm going to use a fissure burr, and I'm just going to cut into the enamel and remove all of the nastiness. In this case, what you do is you kind of remove some of the enamel, you have a little look, you remove a bit more enamel, have a little look. The problem with this, of course, is the, uh, the fast hand piece can't distinguish between sound tooth tissue and, uh, and decayed uh, tissue. So you've got to be really, really careful with these, uh, with, these, with, these fast, with this fast hand piece. And we're having a little look around, a bit more of an assessment. And here is these fantastic, uh, these fantastic uh, ceramic burrs. So you see, they probably don't look much, but actually the great thing about these ceramic burrs and that the patient, when I mentioned this, I was using these ceramic burrs, is that um, they have a great cutting efficiency, but they don't, kind of vibrate the patient's head um, into next week. So um, one of the, pa the patients that I did this on, he's had quite a few fillings. He said that was probably the smoothest drilling that he's ever experienced, which is absolutely fantastic. So uh, now I'm going to use caries detection dye. Again, um, I have started to use this more frequently, not all of the time, but I would really, really like uh, people's opinions on this to caries detection dye because in, in a way, I think it's, it's pretty good. But in another way, what I've noticed is it does get all over the place. And I wonder um, when we wash it away here, we can see that the caries detection dye is uh, stained at the occlusal surface, which needs to be removed at a later date. So if any of our restorative dentists out there know uh, the, the best option to remove this, then, uh, then please let me know. So I'm just going to use the caries detection dye just to see where the remaining decay is. And I'm going to use these ceramic burrs again just to remove very, very judiciously any remaining uh, decay. And uh, what I don't do in this case is I don't use more caries detection dye, which I usually would because of the fact that I've just got it everywhere and I'm really concerned about trying to clean it up. So in this case, I'm just using a uh, ultrasonic tip here to remove it. And we can see once we remove some of the decay with the ceramic burr, there's a little bit of decay left. So we're going to do a bit more uh, uh, cleaning around with this with this burr, just trying to give it a little bit of a clean up. And um, when I was first qualified, what I like to do is remove all darkened dentin, but I've noticed uh, with my practice is that this is probably um, the removal of too much sound tooth tissue. So you've got caries uh, infected uh, dentin and you've got affected dentin. So um, it, it's all about being uh, uh, conservative and also not drilling too far down uh, into the pulp. And I'm just using a, a probe here just to have a little scratch around to see if this is genuinely um, aff affected dentin rather than inf infected. And I notice in this case here there's a tiny little bit of uh, decay remaining in this tooth. And, um, you know, just, just taking my time here, you know, um, luckily I, um, I'm, I'm in practice where I can take my time and do a nice job. But um, you can see here now that when we look at the tooth, um, it's nice and clean. So um, I'm going to do some selective etching in this case. I'm not going to use Scotch bond, like a self-etching bond. I'm going to use uh, eye bond, and um, I'm just going to etch the uh, the enamel. And then what I do like to do is just place a little bit of the etch onto the dentin, but only a tiny little bit. Some people don't like to do that. You can see here now that it's all uh, nice and clean. Um, in fact, I think it looks pretty good, and we can see that inside uh, this sort of buccal cavity here. That this again, we've got that carries affected dentin in and um, I know here that it's all been removed all quite nicely. So we're ready to do our bonding sequence. I'm going to click my microscope over to the blue filter and then we are going to just very very uh, uh, gently and thoroughly uh, place the, the bond into the, the tooth tissue and I'm kind of massaging the bond in here and we can see they've kind of got that sort of glassy appearance. First of all I'm going to use A2 composite and this composite is heated First of all, in this very, very small um, uh, uh, cavity, people might say, well, you know, I haven't used any sort of flowable to adapt this, uh, this, 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 this composite to this cavity. But I am quietly confident that the sort of pressure of the, uh, the composite and the fact that it is also heated has pushed that really, really nicely into the cavity. And then um, I feel like the other cavity and the buccal surface here is a bit deep, so we're going to have to use a bit of... Um, flowable here just to place into the cavity nicely and then finally we're going to use um, some A2 uh, composite just into this uh, uh, this 
final buccal cavity here. And what I want to do is I want to uh, stay true to the uh, anatomy of this tooth, so I'm going to place a kind of a, a, a ridge or a bit of a depression uh, just to make sure we get that kind of uh, a buccal anatomy. We're then ready to uh, uh, fill the uh, main cavity. Again, I'm using a very, very, very thin layer of uh, flowable composite in this case because I don't want to fill up too much because this is going to cause sensitivity. We're going to have shrinkage. And then um, I'm going to use a core A4 shade into uh, this, uh, this, this, this tooth. And I'm just going to use my adaptation tools here just to make sure I'm pushing the, the composite into uh, all the little nooks and crannies. And I, I'm just using very, very, very small uh, layering technique here. I don't want to really, really um, uh, build up this, uh, this, this, this cavity too much because again, we've got to think about C factor here. The C factor here is going to be very, very high. And once we have filled uh, the main cavity with our core dentin shade, this is A4, and I'm going to use our enamel shade, which is A2. And this is um, uh, this is going to be a difficult thing to do if we're using the stamp technique because I don't want to use too much composite because what the stamp technique won't work very well. You have a little, a lot of flash, but I don't want to use too little composite because then the stamp's not going to work. So I'm going to just get the kind of the outline of the occlusal surface here with my adaptation tool. I'm going to get a small piece of PTFE. This is going to go over the, uh, the stamp that I've created, because if you don't use this, it's going to bond directly to the composite. And then I am going to use the stamp to push quite firmly down onto the tooth, make sure I'm making sure that that, uh, that clusal anatomy has been uh, sort of stamped into the tooth. We're gonna move it away, we're gonna like your, and we're then gonna pull away the, uh, the, the, the PTFE tape, give it a bit of light cure. And some of the uh, PTFE has uh, sort of got onto the, uh, <laughs> the, the restoration itself, but no, no worry, we're gonna give it a little bit of a polish up. And you can see here now that this tooth looks absolutely fantastic, very natural. It's got a nice little bit of occlusal anatomy. And um, the last thing to do essentially is just to check the occlusion of this tooth. And the only way to do that is just to remove the, uh, the rubber dam. Uh, we're going to get the patient to bite down. And you can see here now that it looks relatively nice. So I'm very, very happy with this. Again, if you're interested in ceramic burrs, these are from Comet with a K. I went to the dentistry show. You might have seen one of the videos there, and um, he was showing me all these different types of burrs, and I saw this white burr, and I was like, oh, what's this? And, um, you know, the rest is history. So if you like the channel, again, if you haven't already subscribed and you've got this far, please subscribe. We've got a membership program. Again, if we've got any restorative dentists here who've watched this video and you think I should have done something different or it would something would have been better for the patient, please um, don't hesitate, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.